Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another 1-6 scale custom figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are going to be taking a look at none other than the Riddler based off his appearance in The Batman. Now I personally have been super excited to get this in, y'all know I love that movie. This was made by the incredibly talented artist TKT. It's all handmade and they're all full custom. I have popped the link to his Insta in the description below. I've also included the link to Comic Sanctorum, but don't forget, as I just said, this is full custom, meaning it's unlicensed and it's an unofficial product. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon, plus the join button for more info on Justin's Collection Plus, the channel membership. What we are going to do now though, is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. As for the box art, it's simple yet very classy. We've got a Riddler logo front and center, TKT's name down below, plus the box box itself is fully textured. I'm fairly certain this is painted rather than printed. And that's the first time I think I've ever seen that. We do have a little note inside, feel free to pause to read, that is hand signed. And a little instruction sheet letting you know the limitations of the articulation, plus how to use the various parts and pieces. And the name of the project, which is Nigma. Very fitting but not his actual name in the movie. As for Riddler himself, as I said earlier, I have been very excited to get this guy in. And first in hand impressions, yeah, TKT didn't disappoint. What we are going to do now though, is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Starting off with the display base first, I don't think I've ever seen a base quite like this one. The bottom section is an oval in glossy white plastic, you do have a metal rod, and a crotch grabber that can slide up and down. I was hoping for some artwork on top, even if it just said Riddler or the Batman, but unfortunately it's left completely blank. Not to say that that's necessarily a bad thing, some people prefer more simple display bases. Now you do get two different rolls of tape, one to display or hook onto his belt and one to have him actually interact with. This one is permanently fixed as a roll and you have a zip tie to actually lock it on his belt, more on that a little bit later. Whereas this one is meant to be unfurled and used for posing. We will be doing both of those things, like I said before, a little bit later on. Next up we have the carpet tucker and oh yes, it's made of real metal. You do have some ribbing detail for the handle, it's done in this super shiny bright chrome which is accurate to the movie and there is some dirt and grime on the surface. If anything was going to be made out of metal for this figure, yeah, I'm glad it was this. For one of the smallest accessories, we do of course have the thumb drive. The thumb is permanently attached to the USB stick, the severed section is suitably glossy, and the USB itself, while it is tiny, is still very nicely sculpted and painted. Seeing as though it was a running theme in the movie of how Riddler actually delivers his riddles, we do get a green greeting card that says to the Batman and two cards on the inside. The first one is the one from the start of the movie, from your secret friend Who. On the inside, we do have the accurate writing that says what does a liar do when he's dead, the greeting card info itself, and the cipher key. The second one is the message that unfortunately Alfred receives instead of Bruce Wayne that says see you in hell. A very nice touch, and yeah, I'm probably going to display my Batman figure with either one or both of these greeting cards. For the largest accessory by far, we have his sniper rifle. Now, technically you could give this to Riddler if you wanted to, but I more see this as one of the rifles the Riddler goons were using. Therefore, I am tempted to pick up multiple of these and have them battling Batman, just like we saw at the end of the movie. We do have a proper material strap that you can use to sling it over his shoulder, 
and as far as I'm aware, nothing moves here. I did try to slide this back, it's locked in position, and the magazine doesn't really feel like it wants to come out. At the very least, it's nicely sculpted, with some wood grain detail painted onto the surface for both sides. Now the instructions do say to be careful with the barrel, it does seem to be a very thin piece of plastic, so I'm going to do just that. Lastly, you do get a full array of hands, and even though they are relatively simple with just some wrinkles sculpted into the surface, the way they've been painted does make them look like black nitrile gloves. Now I'm not sure if that's what he was wearing in the film, but that's kind of what they come across as. What we are going to do now though is get Riddler himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And yeah, they have captured the look of the Riddler in 1 6 scale beautifully. All the way down to the creepy cling wrapped head sculpt, they have done an amazing job. The choice of body, the proportions, the way it fills out the suit, and the suit itself, it's all fabric so you can go crazy with your posing. It's suitably weathered, it looks like it was literally ripped right off screen and put in my light box. Plus all of that awesome stuff he comes with. Yeah, so far I'm pretty darn happy. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him up close and personal. And yeah, this guy absolutely delivers on the creepy factor. That's 100% the Riddler from the movie. Starting off with the head sculpt first, it is all fully sculpted around the front, but around the back it's properly wrapped in plastic. You do have some proper straps, but as I said, this front portion can't come off, it's fully sculpted. The eyes are nicely painted, and the glasses are proper separate pieces. So if you wanted to, you could technically remove them. As for the jacket, there are multiple layers here. You do have the outer jacket with the Riddler logo painted on the front, and it's absolutely filthy. There are multiple layers of dirt and grime in all the wrinkles and in all the seams, plus up here around the fur collar, it's completely soiled. You also have the green hoodie, which has a proper working hood around the back, and so too does the jacket. Plus another big Riddler logo around the back. Coming down to the pants, they are just some black military style pants, plus some weathering on the surface, and they are cinched just above his boots. Now the boots are fully sculpted, and unfortunately they aren't a split cut boot design. That means you don't have any ankle articulation, but at the very least they do look accurate and there is a ton of texture on the surface. There is also a serviceable amount of weathering on both sides, and it's asymmetrical, it's not just a print, this is a handmade custom, so it's all hand painted. On the underside you do have some treads, and once again they are weathered. This guy may be custom, but in all honesty he looks and feels like an official product. An example of that is this detail right here. If you flip up his jacket, there is a real metal hook that you can clip his tape onto. It's connected via this little zip tie, it's super neat, and it's just those small details that come together to make for a super high quality feeling figure. Now for a quick side by side comparison, here we have the TKT Riddler on the left and my custom Batman on the right. And as you can see, Riddler is a little bit shorter, which I think is fairly accurate. They're both wearing relatively chonky soled boots, and I think they're on similar bodies as well. Now Hot Toys is releasing their own version of the Batman, and so is Inart, so you are going to have multiple different versions to choose from. I don't know if anyone is actively working on a Riddler, at least in an official capacity, so for now, this guy might just be your best bet, because posed up alongside this Batman, yeah, they look really good together. Just going over articulation. Bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. 
I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I am willing to go. Starting off with the head sculpt, there is a ball joint at the base of the neck. Looking forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, they will go forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow that does get you the full way, and then a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso will crunch forward and back at the midsection and at the waist. Swivel and pivot side to side. The legs go forward to there, they do go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee that does get you the full way, you do have a double ball peg for the ankle, but unfortunately, because it's one fixed solid piece, you only get swivel. Just wrapping up on TKT's Custom Riddler. Going into this, oh yes, I was very excited, but I also kind of had no idea what to expect. I've never owned any of TKT's previous projects, so this was all new, at least to me. In saying that though, this might be the first figure that I've picked up off him, but it's definitely not going to be the last. I absolutely love it. This might just be up there with some of my all-time favourite custom figures. Starting off with the accessories, he comes with a ton and they're very scene specific. My favourite is probably the die-cast carpet tucker, although I love the roll of tape as well, do let me know which is your favourite accessory down below. Then we get to the figure himself. The choice of body is perfect. It's tall and lanky, the proportions are great and super realistic, plus the articulation is on point, because his outfit is full fabric. Plus it's super weathered and, as far as I can tell, super accurate. Then we have the head sculpt, which I'm a huge fan of. I love the custom clear glasses, plus the actual plastic wrap on the back of his head sculpt. Something that I thought was going to be fully sculpted, but it absolutely isn't. I can't imagine this figure was easy to make. It looks incredible, it's intricate, it's detailed, it's very well weathered. And all of those things come together to make for a truly spectacular figure. Do bear in mind though, this is an unlicensed, unofficial, handmade custom. I have popped the link to Comic Sanctorum and TKT's Instagram in the description down below. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. Also, check out the join button for more info on Justin's Collection Plus, the channel membership, if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.